So today I would like to speak about inner knowing or how do, how do we get information deeper, subtle information about certain elements of this reality or other dimensions of conscious reality, meaning subtler dimensions. But first of all, whatever is relevant for, now, for us now has to be addressed first. So a lot of people are curious about Jivamukti. How does Jivamukti know? How does she receive certain information about things or aspects of reality that many people don't even think about? So some of you ask me these questions. And my answer is, I mean, first of all, if you would like to experience uh, directly uh, this presence and knowledge or knowledge in the form of presence beyond words you may join free invoking reality events uh, for which you may sign up uh, through www.siddhakandaliniyoga.com or you can always email me if you have certain questions about certain things you want me to talk about I do appreciate all your comments and try to respond to all of them, especially when they're relevant and important for other people. So, but how does one get deep information or understanding of reality beyond the mundane level of awareness and understanding of reality? So, when one has an open channel, and to, to this higher being, to the creative being, one is tapped into that creative being. Whatever one observes, whatever one pays attention at within this projected reality, through the absorbed being, because we may say that to some degree we're all connected to the higher being, but we are not always aware, tuned into it and in alignment. So the, a being, a human being in a human form, you may say, who is aligned to that being, higher being, higher consciousness, is primarily aware of that higher consciousness and higher being at all times and yet is able to observe all the other frequencies and dimensions below that. So whatever the evolutionary level of that being is, and as long as they are in the physical body, if they are truly connected to that higher being, they may observe and receive information and knowledge, you may say, of any element within this spectrum of dimensions, subtleties of consciousness and what comes to the physical reality whenever I walk whenever I sit somewhere I observe people when I look at them I receive full complete wholesome information to the degree I am able to process it so it's an instant knowing it's because if I'm aligned with a higher being and absorbed, I receive the waves of other frequencies, lower frequencies. Lower frequencies doesn't mean bad. They are just different frequencies that represent this world, the emanation of this world. And each individual being is a unit, is a a unique part of this uh, dimension, of this collective existence at this point. Whatever level they are representing within the collective will be emanating. So if you are in an absorbed state or in yoga, in other words, you are aligned with a higher frequency and higher being, what wherever you 
look at whatever you observe, you simply know instantly about anything or anyone, any phenomenon. It's because there is no separation and no judgment, but direct perception of whatever other waves and frequencies that element emanates. You look at them, but you don't really look at them. You just see, yeah, you register the physical form, but you perceive emanations. You perceive the traumas, the distortions, the inclinations, the soul frequency beyond these inclinations and traumas. And so it's a collage. Every being is like a collage of all these different frequencies. But the soul frequency is that of a higher level, which is always there, but now is obscured or veiled by the... Uh, you know, trauma, corruption of the past lives or this life and so on and so forth, distortions. So when yogis explain meditation and when they spoke about meditation as a concentration, they didn't really mean that one would actively deliberately, egotistically, on purpose concentrate on any element of this reality. This is misconception. Meditation is greatly misunderstood. No true yogi or enlightened being will say you concentrate on anything outside of oneself or yourself. That is false teaching. A true teaching says Keep focus within, know thyself, and you'll know everything which is outside of the self, because that is just the projection. And whatever it is, whatever it represents on the limited level, on the limited scale of that spectrum of consciousness, it will reflect back onto you or back to you, and you'll know. So when yogis uh, looked as if they were concentrating on something outside of themselves. They weren't actually. They were in an absorbed state, just maybe holding that apple. In, a, in an equanimous state, in a detached manner, and yet they perceived everything about it. That's the principle. The point is not to focus on anything within the projected reality. The projected reality is relevant once you are alive. You are alive only then when your focus is within and you are in your full power and alignment. Then you can say, I am living and this is the projection of me. Otherwise, you can't say that. This is not your reality. This is someone else's reality. Your reality then is just you being in fragments scattered all over this projected reality. Now, there are a lot of meditative techniques which actually are... If you look closely at them, uh, are based on kind of, or they they intend to bring your focus within, to bring your focus within your body. For example, uh, when you need to meditate to to focus on your organs or on different plexuses. Now there is a huge min misconception about chakras because we don't understand what consciousness is and whatever we hear about spirituality we project it onto our physical being which is only the fruit of that consciousness we don't know the consciousness we're not fully aware of the subtle spectrum of this consciousness so whatever we hear or try to understand in a spiritual sense we see it through the bodily perspective unfortunately this is where the misconception comes from so now we start projecting it onto glands. We start looking at chakras from glands point of view, from organs point of view, from the point of view of what areas of life this chakras supposedly represent. But we don't understand that our spiritual being is different 
the the higher knowledge or teaching of chakras different dimensions of consciousness and creation which is, would be still relevant for us if we were connected and aligned with the higher being these different vortexes represent exit points to other dimensions where we supposedly have to become aware of or be aware of and have subtle sort of identity now this aspect might not be understood by the majority and i'm not speaking from the arrogance point of view i'm speaking from the experience point of view because those beings or the majority have no reference point have you ever met an enlightened being have you been chatting with them having tea no we don't have that reference point to compare with it's all uh, like just hear and say someone else's understanding limited to their evolutionary level and so this understanding cannot be taken for absolute true spirituality is not about believing in anything or disbelieving it's about opening up to a direct spiritual experience but not you know being obsessed or craving for the spiritual experience being open with humility to the grace of the higher being so that one day through surrender and letting go of our traumatic understanding of reality limited understanding obscure distorted we can finally surrender and experience this higher being before that there is no reference point and that experience of higher being is again it's not static it continuously refines and becomes subtler and subtler and it's not just an experience anymore it's a being this is where there is a process of integration and alignment that has to take place because if it's just an experience it's like any other experience it has to become your being then you say you may say i am aligned i live yoga i live absorption i live meditation then it's a living knowledge a living presence a living understanding of reality so when we speak of chakras in terms of our physical body we are misled we 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 are limited in in that kind of understanding yes we have our subtle body energy body that reflects on our physical being and the physical being is present or represented through different organs and glands and then nervous system which are channels through which impulses or information is carried uh around circulated this energy circulated in the form of blood circulation and so our living organism is supported but what does it have to do with our consciousness consciousness has its own existence but whatever it has outside of the body is somewhat reflected in the body or on the body on the condition of the body and so we have to look at chakras from various standpoints on one hand the when we speak in terms of awakening conscious awakening or kundalini awakening kundalini awakening means the awakening of the active aspect of consciousness creative aspect of consciousness that starts refine that starts refining itself becoming aware of itself refining itself from corruption from distortions and thus it elevates in the in the frequency level so th- when it elevates in the frequency level it has nothing to do with ascension within the physical body it has to do with the evolution of consciousness beyond the physical body but then it will 
reflect on the physical body because that ascension or evolution on a subtle level will translate through our or will reflect on our energy body and then this energy body will be reflected or transmitted through our glandular system into the physical body. Now, the, this transmission happens through the secretion of hormones. And I've described this all in deta details. All these things are already there in Siddha Prampara for years. In all the past videos as well, you may hear about that in glimpses. So, we discuss that in detail through Shaktipat stream. But you may download through Kindle, you may buy Siddha Prampara, different parts or the whole book and read about it it's the science it's the science of kundalini awakening that is not based on someone else's perception or understanding but through a direct experience and this vessel's intellectual apparatus because everyone's intellect is different we may perceive the same thing, but interpret it differently depending on our level of intelligence. So whatever was within my capacity, evolutionary capacity at that time and now, I was trying to convey that through the books and the transmissions. So when our consciousness is evolving, and the evolution of consciousness means it gets rid of distortions, limitations within it. So, its pure essence is revealed more and more. The awareness expands within this world, beyond this world, beyond any subtlety which is relevant for this world, this dimension, other dimensions. And further and further we go. The further we go, the more collective is the sense of being in existence. But again, we cannot refer to that because we, at first we have to refine the individual sense of self. Only then we will be able to understand how this refinement uh, positively affects our evolution on the collective level and further. Because as long as we are bound to this body, to this individual experience, we are called ignorant and even evil because everything is just about us about this limitation so evolution means your consciousness expands its perception beyond the limited self and through this expansion and awareness it understands how this uh, perverted sense of sense self as a limited being is so important in one's body is gradually refining, dissolving. That's why one starts perceiving oneself more on a collective level. It doesn't mean one instantly abandons the body, but even though one exists in the body, one's consciousness is perceived within and beyond. But one is collected, focused within, so one nurtures the body, nourishes the body, and yet is fully aware of whatever it, there is in the projection, in the projected reality, in the projected world. And this is what the enlightened perspective is all about. It's not about my individual being has to become great or my ego has to be acknowledged and validated by the uh, projected reality. It's again misconception based on the limited understanding of self, that egotistical self that wants validation, that sees everything through gain, through grabbing, through trying to make sense out of oneself through the projection or within the projected reality. That is falsehood, that is corruption. When we take our focus from that into the essence, we understand that our individual being is not important to that degree that we give or used to give it importance and thus that corrupt individuality dissipates dissolves and the truth remains 
the vehicle now is not plagued with egotism, but becomes the vessel of yoga, the vessel of enlightenment, the vessel of knowledge and emanation of the truth, of the higher frequency. To what, whatever degree one is, has evolved. Because there is no one standing there and measuring that evolution. The evolution is ongoing. But the more one surrenders into that flow, the further one refines, evolves, and simply knows. That's how it all happens. Thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions or would like me to address certain points, you may email me or post your questions in the comments below. Thank you very much.